I've chosen tones of turquoise and green for this, this mixed media page. And I started off here by using uh, different kinds of collage paper. That's some old, old wallpaper that I'm gluing down there, textured wallpaper. Um, and wrapping paper and that kind of thing. And I'm using Golden's Extra Heavy Gel Matte and Soft Gel Gloss to glue these down. And as you can see, I'm sometimes doing it on the on the paper, on the, uh, the back of the paper, and also onto the page as well, because I don't want any air bubbles. So I'm putting them down in different areas and just deciding what should go where. And when I've got these down, then I use a stencil and I take some paint and I'm using here a deco art paint called Vintage and I'm using a, a baby wipe to put it through the stencil just in different areas. Now it just so happens that this stencil was used previously with some purple dye on it so it's come out slightly bluer than I'd planned. Now I'm taking my brush and I'm just brushing in different areas just to sort of see if I can uh, get the get the paint here and there. I'm not really thinking. I'm just sort of doing it intuitively And then I'm just taking a little bit more through the stencil to see what happens Right now I just have to dry it a little bit quickly and Because the paper I'm working on is only 140 gram I'm using clear gesso by Liquitex to really just to cover the whole thing and give it a bit of grit. It has so, almost like fine sandpaper, but it also covers up the gel that I've used and it also stiffens the paper very slightly. I'm going to print with a gel plate and I'm using Golden Open acrylic paint in a colour called Titan Green Pale, which I'm rolling on and then I'm using actually a stamp that I've made myself with a lino cutting uh, tool and I'm first of all printing off the stamp and then the plate and you get two different effects by doing that both a, like a positive and a negative and I'm just cleaning my my brayer and then I'm going to use another color and that is also golden but it's I'm going to take golden fluid in a color called bronze iridescent bronze which dries a little bit quicker so I'm doing the same procedure with the same the same uh, stamp and then we'll see a close-up of that a little later on. Now I'm using a Molotov pen just to do a few marks here and there, also in a green colour, sort of khaki green. And then this is an Ecoline pen, which uh, I'm just doing a few branches with. Now I'm using a brush to water it out and dilute it and sort of make it so it's not quite so strong. Now I'm using a, a Sennelier oil pastel in also a dirty green and then in a slightly darker green I'm doing a few circles around each mark and this is just to sort of decorate the page really. Now here you can see my dirty watercolour palette and I'm using a colour here called Zozite which is by Daniel Smith and I just love it. It's a very dirty grey green that granulates a lot and I'm using it over the different areas that I've painted and where I've had say oil pastel or uh, acrylic paint it will resist the watercolour and I really like that effect. So having done that I'm now taking the bronze again the golden fluid bronze and I'm just dropping that into the wet watercolour just to see what happens. The bronze is really lovely actually because it also separates uh, into a sort of verdigris colour um, when you add water to it. So you get the bronze metallic and then you also get a kind of greeny tinge to it like verdigris which is really lovely. Right now back to some pens. Here's a, a Faber-Castell pen which is a watercolour brush pen. Uh, and it was supposed to be a green one, but I don't know what came out. It came out sort of indigo instead, but never mind. I, I quite like the effect. The other end came out green, so it's very special. I don't know why that happened. And again, I'm just doing little dots. I'm doing little stripes. I'm just doing little areas. And then I'm adding water to it again uh, to spread it out a bit so it's not quite so, uh, so strong. Here we have a close-up of it. Right, now I'm going to get down to what I was planning on doing from the start, and that is drawing a little boy. And I'm using a Faber-Castell polychromous pencil uh, in a colour called Earth Green. And 
I'm starting with earth green, which is quite light and quite like the same colour as a lot of the stuff that's printed already on the page. And uh, I'm just sketching him out. Now, I'm not doing this from from my imagination. I've actually got a, uh, a little magazine beside me with a picture of a little boy who doesn't look exactly like this, but uh, I'm using that to... Uh, as, as something to draw from. I, I always like to draw from something. I always think that it's, uh, you, it's a, you've got a better chance of getting it uh, in good perspective and that kind of thing. So now I've changed pens and I'm using a Derwent Inktense pen in a colour called Payne's Grey. And you can see it's a lot stronger. And I'm using different kinds of pressure. Sometimes I'm pressing quite hard and I get quite a hard line. Sometimes I'm not pressing as hard and I get a softer line. And you'll see that when you see it close up. And what I'm really doing is I'm going over the lines that I did with the lighter polychromous pe pencil. But now I'm a bit more sure because I know where everything, where I want it to be. And... I'm shading in slightly sometimes. I'm doing a few little details. Now I'm doing, as you can see, the tights. And those are going to be slightly darker. And then I'm actually using the pattern, which is on the page, to look as though there are patterned boots. Now I'm using water. And as you can see, it melts beautifully. So you get this lovely shaded effect. And I'm not using water absolutely everywhere. And sometimes here, as you can see, there I have to dab it because suddenly got a black eye and now he's got a beard. Uh, and so what you do is you can just lift it off. Now, what's incredible about Inktense pencils is that once they have dried, they dry permanently. So once this has dried, as long as I have used water to uh, wet it, as, as soon as it dries, it will dry permanently. Now I'm using the Faber-Castell pen, pen again, brush pen, uh, which is also water soluble. And I'm going to just use a bit of water and a brush to soften those stripes. So it sort of looks like grass, but it could be anything really. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, some more acrylic paint, a uh, hobby paint by a mate called Plus, which is a kind of pinky beige. And I'm going to uh, give him a little bit more colour. So I'm painting with a finer brush and just filling in uh, his skin colour there. Now, as I, as you know, uh, the ink tents is water soluble. So when I mix it with the pencil here, uh, I get either a shadow or another beard. Uh, so you can see how uh, it melts in. I actually quite like the fact that you can melt it in and sort of give it a kind of you get almost like a, 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 the shadow is free you 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 don't you don't have to pay for it it, it comes automatically so uh, I'm just filling that in there a um, bit more softening the shadow under his chin slightly and then a little bit on the hair as well just to sort of lighten it up make him slightly look like a, he's blonde that mixes in as well with the ink tents, as you can see. So now I'm adding a little bit of watercolour in a pink and just mixing it in with the acrylic, just to give him rosy cheeks. Don't want it to be very strong, just very, very subtle. And a little bit on the lips as well, just to sort of warm him, warm him up a bit. Here and there. A little bit on his ears on his cheek again, and then on the ends of his fingers. So while that, while that dries, I'm actually going to work a little bit on the background. And here I've taken my pen out again, this Polychromos pen, Green Earth, and I'm just going over, uh, giving a bit more definition to some of the lines there on that stamp that I stamped earlier. Uh, not everywhere, just a, f a few lines here and there, just to give it a little bit more depth. It's almost exactly the same colour as the uh, the paint that I used, the Titan Green Pale that I used. A few little circles around the dots. And then a little bit further down, I'm doing the same thing again with the same pencil, just to add a bit more definition, make it more interesting. Uh, as a background behind the little boy. A few dots, few dashes. 
and then I'm using a Copic pen there just to do a few spots. Right now I'm using another deco art Americana color called Blue Mist, uh, which is also acrylic, and I just love the color. And I'm just filling in his jacket here and there with a fine brush. Now then, back to the face. I'm adding a bit of highlight here, and I'm again using Golden Fluid in Titan Titanium White, and uh, just adding. A few highlights on the on his forehead, on his nose, on his cheeks, chin, upper lip, and his ears, just to just to sort of brighten him up again. Again, make him slightly more three D, and a little bit on his hand as well. And then I'm using the same colour to do a few spots. And here we're giving him a spotty anorak that he's wearing. A little bit on his hair as well to lighten it, lighten that up again. I actually love doing little patterns on things. I think it's really fun. So I'm adding a bit of white to the background as well, just so that the white comes again somewhere in another area. What's nice about these these books or this book that I'm using? It's by Talens. Um, it's got a sort of creamy coloured page, which I think is lovely, especially when you work with whites on top of it. More white here and there in the background again. A few more spots. And then a little bit more in his hair. And his fingernails. And thumb. Right, just a little bit more. His thumb had sort of disappeared, so just adding a little bit more of that, that acrylic paint the beigey peachy colour and now I'm going to work into him again with the details with the ink tense pencil just give him slightly more eyelashes a bit more of a smile a nostril there a little bit more shadow at the back of his neck and a few more hairs on his head this is where I'm also going to give him a bit of shadow and this one I'm it, hopefully it won't look like a beard a few more wrinkles and stuff dot in his eye and he's finished so this is what the page looked like and we're just going to hover over the page now and I'm going to just show you a few more details of what what it all looks like when it's all come together so you can see he stands out because of that ink tense pencil he really stands out uh, even though there's quite a lot of stuff going on in the background. And you get that watercolour effect from the ink tense when it dries. And there's the zoosite, the, the bronze as well on the print that I did. Here you can see the collage paper. And there's the stencil. And you can probably also pick out that uh, those turquoise things at the bottom uh, I actually used a uh, an ink pad to do those, which I forgot to film, of course. But I thought I'll just show you now what I used. So this is my book that I'm using, and it's called Art Creation. It's by Talens, and it's got 140 gram paper. It's about a, about an A4 size. I've got a few different things. I've just started the book. Um, but the paper's quite nice. Um, I like, I love the colour. I love the rounded edges. And you know, if you want to work more with sort of water and water-based media, then you can, as I did, use that clear gesso. So here's the golden extra heavy gel matte that I used at the beginning, and the soft gel gloss. Those are my favourite glues. Uh, and then we've got these hobby paints, acrylics. Uh, by DecoArt and by Plus, the three different sorts that I used, and this is the one that's called Flesh Tone Light, I think. Then here we've got uh, Golden Iridescent Bronze Fluid, and here is the Golden Open Slow Drying, which I used to print with in Titan Green Pale. And then we have the pens that I've used. Now, first of all, here's the Faber-Castell uh, water soluble felt pen with two ends the brush end and the finer end 
Then we've got the Ecoline, also by Talens, I think, uh, also a brush pen. Uh, then we've got the Copic pen that I used. It's also in green. You know, I've picked together all my greens that I have. That's got a brush end and then a chisel tip. Here's the Molotov one that is uh, sort of khaki green color, dirty green. There's my Polychromos in the uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos in the green earth. Here's my rather dirty Payne's Grey uh, Derwent ink tens pencil. Here are two Sennelier oil pastels that I've used. And then we've got, here's my stamp that I made uh, with uh, a soft, soft cut and then with a lino, uh, lino cutter. Here's my little gel press and then the roller, the brayer that used, I used for it. Here are my paints. I always use tube paints and squirt them out into this little travel kit that I have. And that was Zozite that I used. Here's the, my stencil kit there. I've got lots of stencils. Um, and then, yes, here's the little uh, ink pad that I used, which was also in green, which is very, very old. And I just used a little snowflake um, stamp. Um, but I also used it for certain areas by literally just stamping straight onto the paper to get that leaf shape. Uh, so that was those things. But then I've also got the clear gesso by Liquitex in a huge bottle because I use a lot of it. And then Golden's uh, Titan Buff Fluid and Golden's titanium white also fluid thanks for watching and i hope you'll follow me on instagram and uh, also youtube